Hey guys, John here. Today I wanted to show you my certain process in FL Studio to do vocal automation. I do a lot of this with Pro Tools and I love the workflow that that provides. However, in FL you have to do it a slightly different way. And I've messed around with different features and different kind of methods to go about it. And this is the one I find works the best with the best results. And I've started with a blank template so you can follow along and maybe incorporate this in your workflow. It works best, I think, for vocals, but really for any sound that you really want to work with. So without further ado, let's kind of get started here. So let's say I have this vocal. I'm going in these packs. Oh, are you here to move? And we have this one here. So let's start with this. It's just a quick sample. And let's drop, drop this on our playlist here on track two, for example. And it's going to ask us audio clips, audio tracks. Let's do audio tracks. That way it's going to link it here to our second track here. So if we play this here, oh, are you here? we have a fader oh, and it's all linked. It's all great. So let's all click that back to zero. So the next thing I would do, let's zoom in here and let's take a look at this vocal. Let's blow this up here. So we want to automate this and make it all smoothed out. That's the goal. We don't want the vocal to be below the music level or above the music level. We kind of want a static vocal. What a compressor generally will do but to have more of a manual hand touch to it. And then we're gonna run it through obviously an EQ, a compressor. So it's kind of like the automation is happening before the compressor. So the compressor kind of have, has a little less to do and all, almost in a way works a little bit more efficiently. So with that being said, generally some people will say go and automate the fader. I think that's a bad idea and you'll see why in here, in here just a second. So for our first slot here, we're gonna select this and we are going to, well, let's do a right clicks a little bit easier. Let's find our fruity balance and let's drag this here for our first plugin here. So if you don't know what fruity balance is, you have basically a pan control here, left and right, and then a volume control, which is very, very handy. Today, we're just gonna be looking at the volume control. So what are we gonna do here? So let's right click this area here. So this is going to be our vocal length here. Let's turn on our snapping here. I had it off before. So let's go here and let's make this highlight here for our, our vocal. So now what we're going to do is we're going to right click this and we're going to go to create automation clip as I'm sure you're very, very aware of that. Now what we want to do is double click inside here and this we're going to bring up this editor. So now in our fruity balance, let's go all the way down to about 20 dB here. Let's right click this and hit C for copy our minimum value, right click and hit V for paste. So we can't go below 20. Now let's go all the way to the top at 5.6. That's going to be our boost. Right click, hit C for copy that value. Right click here on max and hit V for paste, which just doesn't really matter because it's the max value anyway, but I just like to um, just to do it for my own purposes. Now we're going to close this. So next step here is this vocal here. The clip itself is kind of bright and it's kind of annoying to me. So I'll double click this or right click this here or middle click. Sorry, Jesus Christ. And then we're going to change it to black and then accept. And then we're going to hit OK or enter. So now it's darkened and it's kind of in the background. We can still see the waveform, which is going to be very helpful. But what we're going to do now is I like to have this clip directly above or laying right over my, my audio. So if I click this and I hold control so we can't move it any other way, but up and down, I'll lay it right on top. And I'll kind of blow, blow this up here and I'll zoom in here. So now we have our automation line going through our vocals. So we can see our vocal and we can see our lines. So the next step, what I like to do is I'll right click this or I'll click this to zero. I'll right click, copy the value. It's a little tedious at first to get set up, but you'll see why in just a moment. I'll right click this and hit V and then right click this and hit V. So now we have zero change, zero dB, and this is our default line here. So moving on, I'll right click this point here or I'll make a new point, hold shift by the way, right click and then right click this one and select hold. So why do we do hold? I like clicking as less as possible if I can. So let's listen to this vocal and see what we got first. You here to move. You here. Start from the very top here. Oh, are you here to move? Oh, are you here? Oh, are you? So let's say, are you right here? Oh, are you? Oh, are you? So let's say, are you? Oh, are you? We want to bring that, that section down. So if we zoom into this here and let's hold shift, right click here and right click here. Now we have this handle here and we can just move this down. Oh, are you? If we go all the way down here, it's going to drop it by 20 dB, as you can see here. And that's kind of our limit that we're going to set because I don't want to go all the way down. Definitely in Pro Tools you can, but I don't think that it's really helpful to go all the way down because now we have more of a, a controlled range. So we can go down 20 dB and we can go up 5.6. So we can turn this all the way to the top. We can see that 5.6 dB. So 
With that being said, we have this little node, we can kind of grab this here. Are you here, to, are you here? So here, let's bring this down a little bit. So hold shift and holding shift and right clicking is going to add a node without changing the value. So it's going to add the node right where the value's at. Now let's bring this one down a little bit. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here to move? So now to move is going to be too loud too. So we kind of want to match this level. Are you here to move? Are you here to? Now let's say we just want to affect this little section right here. Are you here? To, that too. To move. So drag, hold shift, right click right there, and then just bring that down a little bit. To move. Now move. Let's dra drag a point right there with right click and shift. Now let's bring this one down a little bit. To move. Now this move is a little bit too loud as well. So we'll hold shift and right click right around here, and then move this and bring this down. To move. Now what you might notice is you see how that was kind of snapping there. I kind of couldn't really put it where I wanted to. Now that's because of this grid is on, so that's why I had it off before. So if we go none. Let's delete this and let's delete this here. I think there's one below that, yeah. So now what's convenient about having the line over the audio itself, we can zoom in and we can see this is where the amplitude increases. So we can drop a node right there. We can scroll over here and say, okay, maybe this is fine where this is gonna be. So with our mouse right on the audio, we can right click and then drop it and it's gonna be at that same spot. Now we can freely move this toggle here. Now, if you don't like this moving left and right, you can hold control when you, when you move it again. So another little shortcut right there. So let's listen back to see what we have here. Oh, are you here to move? Oh, are you here to move? Okay, let's bring this down here because we don't want such a big jump here. So let's bring that down as well, which this should be hold. And this, I don't think that was hold as well. Yeah, that was single curve. So let's bring that back to hold and bring this down. Oh, are you here to move? So now this section here seems a little too loud to me. And that's easy. We grab it and we bring it down a little bit. Oh, are you here to move? Or are you here to move? And with this for workflow, it becomes very easy to go back and edit some certain things. Or are you and it's all in simple blocks as, as detailed as you want to go. Or are you so this ORU, so let's bring that down just by a little bit here. So we can gra grab this part, bring that down, maybe bring this down as well. Or are you here? Or are you let's bring that up. It's kind of a little too low. Or are you or are you and get in the habit of clicking first and then holding control. So once you click and hold control, even if you move your mouse left and right, it's going to keep that same selection, but this is where you're going to change the amplitude. Or are you here to move? Or are you here to move? So generally, if you look at these lines here, and it's going straight down vertically. So what can happen there is there could be a problem where if you're changing the amplitude too fast at too drastic of an amount, then you can introduce some pops and noises and sometimes it can sound bad for a lot of the times i've noticed i haven't really heard anything that's poked out to me especially when there's going to be music going on in the background so if you don't hear anything then it's generally going to be fine however i do want you guys to be aware of this feature as well so let's say this is our vocal i mean i generally want to go a little bit deeper than that but this is kind of just demonstrating the workflow so let's say we're done this is what we like and we hear a little little pops and we're like we like what we did but it's just too jagged. It's not smooth enough. We want to have a little bit of fade ins and fade outs of these lines. So what we can do is we can click this little button here at the top left of the automation clip, go to automation or articulator controls and go to smooth up here. Now you're going to have these two little sliders here. So we're going to have our attack. Let's bring this down to zero. So this is basically what we're looking at before. As we increase this attack, we can see that our first lines are going to be starting to get smoothed down. And then our release is going to be the tail end of that. So generally with this, you need a tiny, tiny amount. So if we look on our tooltip and we start dragging up and down, we can kind of see some envelope points, some stuff happening, but it doesn't really show our value too well. So this is where we're going to have to zoom in here and look with our eyes. So if we zoom in here, here's a good little chunk here, and let's go back to that menu. So articulate tools and then smooth up. Now our release is down, our attack is down. So we slowly want to increase this until we see just a little bit of movement here. You can kind of maybe see it right here a little bit. I'll make a little drastic change here so you can see this here. So let's do something like that. So let's say that you're happy with that. Articulator tools and then smooth up. Now we can kind of see how that's kind of rounding it off. And let's say that's okay. And then now for our release, we want to just maybe add a slight bit like that. And then we can hit accept. Now what that's done is it's created a little bit of roundness to it. So it's going to be our same edits and our same moves. But now if you have any clicks or any pops, it's going to remove all that together. Or are you here to move? So now our vocal sounds a little bit better since we did that first automation pass. Now we can click this automation and hold control and then drop it back down underneath our track and then hide it. And now we know our automation's good. Or are you then later on now we can move on to adding an EQ and then maybe adding a compressor or something like that or fruity limiter, which is also a compressor here. If you click this little button, 
Oh, are you here to move? So let's do a uh, little eye pass here. Oh, are you here to move? Oh, are you here? Find that mud. Oh, are you here to move? Oh, are you here to move? Remove that out. Let's find about 10k or 9k. Oh, are you here to move? Oh, are you here to move? Give her some of the airiness. Oh, are you here to move? Oh, are you here to move? Maybe not too much because she has little S's in her voice. Oh, are you here to move? Now let's look at our compressor and start dialing this in. Let's drag down our threshold here. Are you here to move? Oh, are you here to move? And then let's go for our ratio. So our threshold's kind of like on the tip, kind of chopping off these little peaks here. Now with our ratio, generally four to one is generally pretty good for vocals. So let's bring this up here and go maybe to about four to one, depending on how much you want to compress your vocals. It's up to you, but are you here to move? Now we can start seeing some compression going on here. Now with our attack, let's maybe go about 10 milliseconds or so. Maybe a little higher to taste. Are you here to move? Are you here to move? Are you here to move? So that tuh is kind of sticking out a little bit too much. So if that's the case and you like your compressor, then what we can also do is we can go back into our automation clip and look at it and see what's happening. So this T, so maybe when we want to bring this down a little bit. So let's kind of pull that down here. Let's make that sure this is hold. And then this also one is hold as well. Oh, are you here to move? 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 So now just by dragging this little spot down. Oh, are you here to move? It kind of removes it there. And now we don't have to drive the compressor so hard. Oh, are you here to move? And also keep in mind, once you do the fade ins and fade outs, I would suggest to only really do that if you actually hear some clicks, because when you do that, you're going to add some extra notes and sometimes that might get a little messy and you have to go and clean them up and delete them, which spends more time. So that smoothing is just kind of a, uh, a safety kind of pass thing in case you hear something bad or artifacts or something like that. But generally I've noticed with using hold, it hasn't really been that bad. Oh, are you here to move? I think they might even add a slight fade to it. I don't know if it's exactly zero to zero. Oh, are you here to move? So now that's pretty good. And at this point, it's pretty much done unless you want to add some reverb vocals. This is kind of more just the chain of automation pass first and then EQ and then compress. And then if you want to, you can go in here and you can add some vintage verb, which is my personal favorite. And then maybe go to some type of preset here that you like. Let's see. Uh, let's check out small vocal hall. Let's see how that sounds here. So always rename things, so verb here, and then we'll send this this song here to this reverb. Oh, are you here to move? Oh, are you here to move? Oh, are you here to move? So now it's a little bit more process, but basically in a nutshell, this is the automation process that I've come up with for myself that helps the most. It's generally using hold a lot more because then you're gonna you're not gonna be clicking around and changing the curve so much. You can do that if you want to. And I also like seeing the automation clip actually on the track I'm working on. And then once I'm done with it, I can bring it down and then hide it as well. And that works for any other automation for any other tracks or anything like that. And it's kind of useful to keep it clean. And that's pretty much it. You can also change your color back if you don't, if you want to, but I kind of like having the vocals as a black faded background. So I don't really have to see them too much. Or like I said, you can click here, maybe change it back to red and then uh, hit enter and there you go, it's just up to you to pick your color. But that's in a nutshell, hopefully you stayed all the way through. I know this is kind of long, but this process I feel will bring you to the next level as far as automating goes. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.